All right, so now we're gonna look at the temperature dependence of diffusivity. So we've kind of seen this in a lot of the expressions that we've looked at, but I wanna look at it a little bit more closely. So what we're looking at here with this slide is the diffusion constant or, sorry, the diffusion coefficient or diffusivity. Again, those are the same things on the y-axis. And then on the x-axis, we're looking at a function of temperature. So one over temperature to be precise in this uh, example. And so that means that temperature is increasing from the right to the left. That's kind of what this is showing us, right? And so with all of this, uh, what this is showing is the diffusivity or diffusion coefficient for a number of ceramics, right? And so if you look uh, at these values, you'll see that it's for some type of ion uh, in a material. So this one way at the top here, it looks like we're looking at potassium K uh, in beta uh, alumina, right? So it's looking at uh, how potassium moves in that uh, material. And all throughout these, you'll see the same thing. It's some ion moving in some ceramic, right? And so what we see is that this expression, right, this Arrhenius uh, relationship, because we're plotting uh, log of the thing versus one over temperature, that expression is linear, right? So the slope then tells us uh, about the um, activation energy, the term we just talked about, um, and then we can also get information uh, about the pre-exponential as well from this curve, right? So that is what this is kind of showing. And the higher the diffusivity here, the faster diffusion will occur in that material, right? That's kind of how we're interpreting this. But the one thing to keep in mind here is with almost all of these, if not all of these, you see that they're linear relationships. So that's important to kind of keep in mind. That means that um, this expression that we've developed this empirical expression that we developed for um, diffusivity as a function of temperature is holding, right? It's linear throughout, and therefore it has a single slope. And so that's something to keep in mind is that it's the same, the activation energy is the same throughout. So the next thing I want us to look at is something else. I want us to look at this new curve now. So now I just have one of these curves uh, and I'm looking at the log of diffusivity of sodium ions on the y-axis. So again, a log scale. And I'm looking at one over temperature again. And I'm looking, so I'm looking at the diffusivity of sodium ions in sodium chloride. So I'm looking at a specific ceramic material and a specific ion. So the reason I wanted to uh, show you this one is because now the temperature dependence is not constant. So, you know, again, if I try to fit this, um, it's going to have multiple slopes and therefore multiple uh, activations. And so now we have to consider what causes this. We've got to look at the, the differences uh, in this mechanism because uh, the slope is changing. All right. And so that's what we're going to do with the first um, activity uh, in this section is I want you to Think about this for a bit so you can you know, pause the video um, and think about just like we would in class with the in-class activities think about uh, we have this plot why is this um, mechanism changing uh, and what's causing it why do i have two slopes and think about what that could be a result of so again pause the video think about it and then we'll come back and discuss uh, why that is All right, so you've had a chance to, to look at this problem and think about it for a second. Uh, and so again, we're looking at why this curve that I've tried to redraw here, why the diffusivity has two slopes and uh, why that can be the case. And so we're gonna kind of walk through this and see if you can if we can figure it out. All right, so a couple things I wanna point out. So last, uh, a couple times ago, I mentioned that D naught, that pre-exponential, is weakly temperature dependent. All right, so that's gonna be uh, important here. Um, 
also, uh, I mentioned this site fraction of vacancies, right? This is the site fraction of vacancies. So these appeared in the diffusivity uh, equation. So the site fraction of vacancies, that is also temperature dependent, right? Right, so that D naught expression, which has this term, is therefore temperature dependent. But again, it's somewhat weakly dependent. That doesn't mean it doesn't affect our results. So here, let's take a look um, at our vacancy concentration. If it's controlled by dopants or impurities, right? Then this expression here, our site fraction, uh, would be uh, dependent on how much we dope in as opposed to thermal activation, right? So changing in temperature, right? So if, for example, the sodium chloride that we have has some impurity that's causing sodium ion vacancies, then that would affect the vacancy concentration, right? So that's another thing that can affect this. All right. So in this specific case that we're looking at, we want to look at the diffusivity of sodium ions. So it can be controlled by two things. One, the number of intrinsic sodium vacancies, right? So um, this would be expected in a Schottky reaction. So if we have a Schottky defect, we would expect these types of vacancy. And so that will be thermally activated. And so that can affect what we have. Uh, and two, any extrinsic, right? So this is uh, external factors. So that could be an impurity or a dopant, right? So either intentional or unintentional. Sorry for the misspellings here, a dopant. Um, so that could be something such as calcium chloride, for example. Again, I think we worked uh, on this example in class when we did calcium chloride. There can be uh, vacancies that occur. So let's look at those uh, two scenarios. So for, and I'm going to switch pages here. So for Shockey, defects. Um, our reaction or our concentration of sodium vacancies and our site fraction, sorry, site fraction of chlorine vacancies, right? So this is a part of a shot key. And so uh, see our previous lectures uh, if that isn't um, clear. Uh, is it going to be equal to an, uh, an exponential of the entropy of Schottky's over K? and then multiplied by another exponential of the enthalpy of Schottky defects over KT. Um, also, uh, you know, if we're looking at these uh, Brouwer approximations and we think back to this reaction dominating and nothing else is really accounting for these site uh, ratios, then we can say that our vacancies are going to be equal to each other. Right? So we can add in this expression that we have the site fraction of one is equal to the site fraction of the other. And so that simplifies our expression uh, by a factor of two. And so we can rewrite that our sodium vacancy site ratio is equal to this same thing for chlorine. And that is equal to the exponential. But in this case, you'll see over 2k. So we've added this expression here. 2kt. 
So we've done that. So in this case now, if we look at the diffusivity that would be controlled by Schottky defects then, we can write our diffusivity of sodium ions is going to be equal to alpha lambda squared, that squiggly za i, mu naught, and then the exponential expression that we just came up with. And then we're also going to have this migration term that we still had. All right. So no, a note here is that both enthalpies, Schottky and the migration, right, both of those are now factors of temperature. So we've added and sort of explained where an additional term um, of temperature can uh, be part of this, right? So that's kind of what we've done here. All right, so let's look at the other case. Let's look if, if we have intrinsic impur uh, impurities or dopants. And so in this case, we're going to look at um, calcium chloride. That's our dopant. So from the previous uh, section of this class, we wrote these uh, defect reactions. So when we add in that calcium chloride, uh, one of the possible reactions that we can get is uh, vacancy, uh, vacancies of sodium uh, when we add in the calcium for sodium, because it's going to have a positive charge. And then we have to also add in these chlorine so if this uh, defect reaction uh, doesn't make sense or you're wondering where we got it, go back to that previous section on uh, defect reactions. All right, so the important thing that we're going to look at here is that if I add in one mole of this calcium chloride, um, I'm going to get one mole of these uh, sodium vacancies. It's a one-to-one -one, uh, connection between those two things, right? So for every one mole of uh, calcium chloride that I add, I'm going to get one mole of sodium vacancies. That's what we can kind of get from this. And so now that I know my connection of the sodium vacancies, I can now again write uh, a similar expression for the diffusivity of sodium ions if it's governed by this type of site fraction. So now this is going to be equal to the uh, concentration of calcium in sodium. Again, this is that, that one mole. And then multiply by alpha uh, lambda squared, the squiggly term, mu naught, and the enthalpy term, the exponential. Right. So the site fraction, uh, fraction which we use for capital lambda has now become this uh, part of the expression. Right. So it's governed by this reaction that we have um, up there. And so when we think about if it's governed by this extrinsic concentration of impurities, then it's instead of being governed by temperature, like the other reaction, this is governed by the concentration of uh, dopants, right? And so that's not something we're adjusting uh, during this experiment. So we'd expect this to be um, s consistent with temperature. And so the only factor of temperature then is the migration term that we've seen here. So this is the temperature dependent part. And then the concentration is fixed uh, for a level of doping, right? And so now if we think back, and I'm going to go back to this um, curve that we had before, right? This tells us basically what's happening then is that um, we have two regions of this curve. Uh, one of them, uh, and so if we think about the way this is uh, going, is temperature is increasing from the right to the left. So this is the lower temperature region here, low T. So here we see a slope and this slope is going to be governed 
by that extrinsic doping, right? And so we have uh, the slope here is related to that expression we just developed. But then at a certain point, so there's kind of a crossover here, and above that, we see a different slope. So I'll call this slope two, and this one slope one. So slope two here at the higher temperature, right? So now we have the extrinsically doped uh, part of the material. So that doesn't change. How much calcium we added doesn't change, but we've increased the temperature, right? And so that activates those shocky defects. And so the slope increases and it accounts for both the migration and the thermally activated uh, based on the site ratio. And so we have a different slope that occurs there. And so that's how we can sort of explain these different variations uh, in the slope here. So in the previous slide that I showed where we had everything and it was um, all linear, you know, those were very pure materials. But if we have real materials and they happen to have um, uh, extrinsic doping or impurities, they may in fact have multiple slopes um, if that uh, dopant or impurity affects the overall concentrations. And so that, that's kind of a deeper look at some of this temperature dependence that we can have. Um, for the most part, it's linear. But again, if you are dealing with multiple mechanisms like extrinsic and then also thermally activated, you may have multiple slopes.